Hello, boys and girls. My name is Mike Kelly from Animators Forum and from the Real Illusion Forums, too. So uh, this is going to be a little different. We're going to do a series of uh, experiments, or <laughs> I don't know what you want to call it, uh, just walkthroughs of what I'm doing with Python in iClone. And uh, I'm doing these mostly for, uh, so hopefully people won't make the same mistakes I made, or just of interest, or I don't know. We'll, fi we'll find out how... <laughs> How well these go. I better try to do at least two or three of these and we'll see what the response is. But anyway, so to begin with, this is the idea of here. I have this robot, Robbie the Robot, for those of you that are familiar with Forbidden Planet. And uh, Robbie has a number of moving parts. Um, when he's just operating, when he's not shut down, uh, these antenna rotate and they rotate in different directions. Obviously, this one's straight up and down, this one's sideways. Uh, this cone uh, rotates around in a circle, and while this cone rotates, these gyros also rotate around their own axis. So there's just a few of the rotation things that have to be done. Now, every time I, I uh, want to do an animation with him, I would have to program in or, or actually do those rotations, which you could do. You could select the, these are all sub items. So if I go to the scene here, we go to Robbie. And here he is, Robbie Rigged, and there, so the, the chest is one thing, this head is another thing, but in the side of the head, there's uh, all these other things. So here's like the antenna. So we go to this antenna, and then we could uh, go to the rotation for it, go to modify, and we could watch the, uh, the X value rotate. So you would go to a certain point on the timeline, and, and then you would figure out how many rotations it would need to be for that timeline. So that's... Uh, it's kind of a complicated process because you, you have to figure out, you know, how many times it would rotate around in order to look good when you when you play it. And it, it might be, so in this particular case, it starts off too slow because it has the, the wrong um, uh, uh, transition curve to it. So you want to have, want to change the transition curves as well with that. You want to have this start right away and not slow down at the end. It has an ease in and an ease out. We don't want that. We just want to uh, a regular uh, linear transition curve, so that that would have to be changed in the in the editor. So you would go to your editor and, and you know do that, and then there's a lot of crap to that. But basically, the problem is I, I don't know how many times I know how many times this has to rotate in terms of how many uh, frames per second it does. But trying to calculate that for different timelines would be difficult, and then you multiply that by I have to do it for this antenna as well, and I have to do it for this cone. And for all these little cones, subject to that. So this is a perfect case of a, of a thing that would be good to automate, to have, excuse me, to have, um, you know, it programmed in here. So, uh, so I wrote a program for that, and that's exactly what I did. So here's the program that would control all this, and you see it's not a very long program. It's uh, it's pretty straightforward. Basically, what it does, you always start off with this import RLPY, which is the basic functions. It's a library that has the real illusion uh, functions to it. You have to do that. And then if you're going to do any math stuff, any higher uh, level math, you want to import that. Uh, for example, in this case, we're going to change radians. Uh, I'm sorry, we're going to change uh, degrees into radians. Because radians are used for the rotation here. So uh, we need to have that math function. So we're going to import that math library. But that's the only two we need. And then, uh, excuse me, honey. Would you, and then uh, uh, we have... Um, well, the calculations that are done. So here, what I do is I get the scene time, and I get the uh, project length, and uh, I, I just basically calculate the seconds and the frames per second. And I know for each of these things, I've done some calculations by looking at the movies uh, on how many, how many actual frames at 24 frames per second that these things should be rotating at. So I wrote this function that takes the name of the item. So you have... Uh, if we go to the scene here, you see we have uh, these two antennas, we have the uh, cone itself, and we have inside the cone all the different gyros. And by, by watching the movie, I knew how much they have to rotate. So here's the rotations. Uh, the cone itself rotates 90 frames in a second. So that does all those calculations. So uh, the other thing that I've done here is that you'll see uh, I, I changed the key types from uh, uh, the standard one, which is an ease in and ease out, to a linear key. So this is how you get the key, and that's how you change the, to that linear key. 
And I do that on the zero function, which is the get time where it's, uh, where it's at the zero. And then I do it at the very end of the scene time, which is back there. So, um, and then most of these things I'm going to rotate around the x-axis. The one that I have to rotate around the y-axis is this one that's, that's the wrong, the other direction. The, these things, and, and how can you find that out? Well, if you go to the modify and you go to the rotate and I rotate here, I can see that the x is what's changing here. But if I go to the scene here and I change, select the second antenna and go to modify, then I can see that the y is what has to change there. So that's how you can tell in, in that regard. Um, so then when I run it, it just does all its thing. And that's basically it. Um, and I'll show you how it works when we, when we actually do it. So it will adjust it depending upon the length of the scene, how many frames. In this particular case, it's... Uh, you know, the project is 1800, so it's a pretty standard length project. But if I change this to 2000 or 3000, it would operate exactly the same way. So I go up here, and I, I like to have the council log open because I have printouts of things that work here. So I, I go run the script and go to Robbie New, and then it runs it. And, and these are the things that it did all of those uh, rotations for. So now when I, when I play this, so these are rotating correctly at the right speed. You notice they started right away. So if I go back to the beginning, you'll notice... They don't gear up because they're not easing A's out. And then this rotates around and those rotate around that. This will be an awful lot of work to do, particularly considering that I might have different length projects each time, just setting up these rotations. So, um, so that's, that's what I did with this particular project. And, uh, and there's the code for it. Like I said, it's not a lot of code. We just defined a function and said to rotate this with the name of what, the prop that I'm rotating the number of rotation frames and then the direction that it's rotating in. So that's basically how you do it. It's pretty straightforward the, to rotate something. You uh, just point it towards the uh, object uh, for the control block. You get the transform control block and then you set those keys on that transition. So that was my uh, first program for me that works and we're going to keep building on this because I have some other things that I want Robbie to do programmatically and I'm going to show you some things about how I'm going to do that in the next one of these. So we'll keep going and see what your reactions are.